Hi there, my name is Neil Parfit, and I'm here to give a brief outline on how to get going on the ER301 sound computer. Uh, first, I'll go over some basic connectivity, and then sort of how to navigate on the screens and what the various buttons do. So just getting going, um, there's four separate tracks, as I guess you call them. Each one has a gate, an analog input, and an analog output. So by default, this sound computer can run four completely independent processing blocks. Uh, the cool thing is you can actually gang these together so you could have a stereo block as well as two monos or you could have two stereo blocks and I think eventually Brian's plan is to have a quad block as well. Um, very cool. Um, below that there's four banks labeled A to D and three input sheets. So we got A1, A2, A3 B1, B2, B3, etc. Um, so, if we're just getting going, we'll have the mode switch in edit, which is where you'll usually have it. Um, and if you're just getting going and just setting stuff up for the first time, you'd want to set this switch to admin, which is more of like the global administrative settings of the ER301. You can see here this channel setup, file browser settings, you can see a system log, you can update firmware, etc. Um, so for any navigation or menus on the 301, they'll just show up as little blobs like this. And you can always use this encoder to navigate left and right and see if there's more stuff off to the right or left. Um, to highlight any of this stuff, like to activate one of these menus, you, all you have to do is just press the soft key underneath. So if I wanted to go to File Browser, you just touch the button under File Browser and you're immediately there. Anytime you're in any menu like this, if you need to get back out and go back to the previous, sort of the previous section, you just press up and it will take you right back. Um, so again, if I want to go to example channel setup, I just press the button right underneath channel setup and I'm in there. So right now it's telling us that there's four independent blocks that can be run. And you can see these all highlight as I scroll through them. If I link them, like let's say I go in between these, if I want these to be a stereo unit or a stereo block, I just press enter. And now you notice the light between these two are lit up. So it's saying it's linked. I can press enter again to unlink it. Or if I wanted to link two and three, I can link them there. Then you can see it's linked here, etc., etc. et cetera. Um, in this situation, I just want them all independent because I'm just gonna work on the first sort of block. So. I'm going to press up to get out of here and then basically all the stuff you're going to do when you're dealing with CV, sound processing, processing, all that stuff is in the user area. So I'm going to flip the switch up one more time and this is sort of like the home base when you're putting together patches and doing all your processing. So out one simply means we're using this out here. If I press this one, number two, you can see it's labeled 2. Um, don't get confused with this out 2. That's actually just a label. That's not like an input target or anything like that. Um, all it's telling you is that we're on number 2 or number 3 and so on. So I'm going to go back to number 1. Um, so by default, this is sort of our blank slate. And basically it says, it says insert unit here. So if I'm navigating, as soon as I sort of move my arrow thingy over this, you'll see in the lower menu it says insert. So at this point, I can go, okay, well, what do I want to do? So let's see what we have. All the different functions that Brian has so far are laid out in this big list. So for this example, I want to use the 301 as a just an effects processor, just to make this easy. Um, I'll pick a clocked delay. So again, if I want that delay, I just press the button right underneath it. If I want the EQ, I just press this. If I wanted the sample recorder, I'd press that, etc. So let me zoom back to, where is that? Clock delay. So all you have to do to engage it is just press this. And all of a sudden we have a clocked delay unit, which is what these little blocks are called on that strip. And at any time, if you're sort of confused and you have no idea what's going on or where you are, you can just keep pressing up or you can press home and it will take you 
right back out to the most parent area. So we can see here that there's one clock delay in the chain. So, so far, this isn't really gonna help us because we haven't assigned signal to go anywhere. And just so you know, the signal flow on the 301 on this interface is left to right. So signal comes in here, goes through whatever processes you have, and then goes out to out one if you're on this out one, or it would go to out two, etc. Let me go back. Okay, so obviously the most important thing we need to do is get signal into the ER301. So it could be an analog input, or you could actually use these CV inputs as well. In our case, I want an analog input. So I basically want to move this thingy, this arrow, over to this empty bit. And then you'll see here, set chain input. So if I, if I press the software button here, the soft key, this is my input assignment area. So in 1x, is input one to four. A is these guys, B is these guys, and so on. And the cool thing is he's added scopes, so you can actually see if you have signal coming in. <laughs> like otherwise you're sort of hoping signal's there and you have to make sure. But I know for sure I have signal going to in one because I have it wired from another module just for this demo. Um, so if I want, as an example, let's say I pick in two, Great, except I have no signal going into IN2, so I can literally just press it, and then I've changed my mind, I want IN1, and there we go. It's sending this signal all the way through to the output, and you can see it on the scope as well. And then it's just a matter of if I want to adjust these parameters, I just click on it, and then I can just use the encoder to mess around with it. So. Let's do this, up the feedback a little bit, turn up the wet-dry balance, and it's literally that simple. So let's say I've changed my mind with this effect. I want something else. I can go to the first part of the clock delay and I can click remove, and now it's just the dry signal going in to out again. So if I want to insert some other process here, like a three band equalizer. Now I have control over that. And I have all these additional parameters I can choose. And again, if I've changed my mind, I can go to the first menu option of that unit and I can hit remove. And we're back to where we started. So that's just getting signal into it, but let's talk about manipulating this with outside CV control. So I'm going to add that delay back in, that clock delay. I'm just going to set this to some numbers here. So now here's something here. You'll see something here that says clock. So if you click that, if I hit the focus button, I can sort of trigger a clock, which is sort of useful. But the whole cool thing about this is being able to assign an external source to this clock. So anytime you have something up here that you can externally assign, you'll see some more data down here and it will say empty. And if you notice, this looks exactly like our input assignment way back up here to the left. So if I click this guy, this is going to assign the input source for this clock. So hit that, hit this, and here's our input select again. So I have a gate signal going into gate number one, and you can see it on the scope, so I'll choose that. And then this is where people get confused. As soon as it's assigned, this unit here is an effect process on that input CV signal. So you could do some crazy stuff. You could put a delay on that CV gate, but let's back out of this. So I'll just go up to take us back here, and now you can see that the clock is triggering based on that gate signal. Um, some signals might not be strong enough. You can adjust the threshold so it it properly triggers. See, see how that stopped, but there we go. So there's my clock. Now my delay is perfectly clocked with my external clock source, so I can play with these divisions. 
and it's perfectly synced. I actually have it triggering from a Pamela's workout. So just to show you. Okay, so that's one part of it. But what about being able to control the wet dry balance as an example with an external CV source? So it's actually really easy. So I have this little LS1 here, CV. I'm gonna plug that into A1 as an example. And if I send it CV, you can see the light lights up so we can see it's getting signal. So now all we have to do is assign it. So at this point, I wanna adjust the wet signal. So I'll hit that. And then you'll notice here's that same sort of assignment area again. So I'm gonna hit this bit and I'm gonna set my input to A1. And again, if I touch this, you can see the voltage on the scope so you know you're assigning the right thing. Right, there's my, there's my CV. I'm gonna back out a level so we're back at the main area again. And then we have to apply some gain. So what happens is the left fader is where you have your fader set normally. And that little tiny fader right beside it is your CV. So depending on your outside CV source, you might have to adjust the gain to get that to the, the topmost ceiling of that parameter. So now I have it set so I have perfect dry to wet balance. Which is really cool because now I can actually on the LS1 I can record this movement and loop it and now this thing is just running by itself in the background. So very cool. So while that's all happening, now I have my clock delay with some CV control. I'm going to navigate beyond the clock delay and now I can actually insert something else. So I can say insert and notice how this is all running in real time as well, which is great. Now I'm going to add that EQ. I'm going to take out some of the lows. Let's just uh, add some highs. That glitch is actually just my LS1 being stupid, but... <laughs> but as you can see, I can just keep adding stuff in real time. So I could add a... I don't know, what else can we add here? Could add a limiter. And if you pick... Depending on what you pick, there might be more menu options down here. And it's the same thing. If I want this option, the soft key is right below. So I'm just hit that. Uh, if I hit home, it'll take me right back to the beginning of this chain. So here's a simple patch that takes an external signal, processes it through a clock delay. It's receiving its clock from an external gate and it's receiving an external CV source and assigning it to the wet dry balance. So if I love this patch, and it's exactly what I wanted, if you go right to the beginning of this track, you can literally just hit save, and you can create a preset, so you don't have to go through all that again. You can just load it up as a patch. So I can go new, and then you just use these menus to navigate. So I wanna call it delay. see the file name there. I can hit enter and that's it. Now I have this patch called delay. So if I've completely changed my mind on this whole thing, I can hit clear and it's completely reset the entire strip of number one. So if I was starting again, you know, the next day or I was maybe I, I liked what I did, but I also want to use it on number four. You could just press number four. I could hit load. And then you can just cycle through your files of your pre-existing work. There's my delay. I can hit enter and it will load it up. The only difference is I'd have to change my audio input and output. So Oop. there we go, because my input was still assigned to in one, but the output's hard set. So if I want to use in four instead, 
I'd have to take my cable, plug it to in four, and then on the input, I'd just reassign it. I'd just say, oh, it's on in four now. So really simple. So that's just a quick sort of overview of how to get signal in, manipulate it slightly, and then get the signal out of the 301. So I hope that helped. Cheers.